What's up guys, it's your boy Doreen here. So sorry about not uploading as frequently as I said I would, but I've been busy with school, but summer's about to roll around and I should have a lot more time to make more videos. But what I'm thinking about doing is starting a vlogging series on the channel also because I'm going to be traveling a lot these next few months and I want to capture all the moments and share them with you guys. So I'm going to do vlogging series, don't know when that's going to start, but let me know what you think about that. But yeah, so for today's video, what I want to do is talk about Cloak and Dagger because yesterday Marvel just decided to go ahead and drop the trailer for their upcoming series that's going to be on Freeform. And the reason why I want to make this video, I just want to explain who Cloak and Dagger were because if you're not too familiar with comic books in general, then you probably wouldn't know these characters or who they are. And so I feel like that's the reason they dropped this trailer early so we can start generating hype and we can get some buzz so when the show does come around it doesn't flop or anything like that. So yeah, what I'm just going to do for you guys today is do a quick rundown of who Cloak and Dagger are, their origin, and their powers and get you guys out of here so when the when the show does come out you'll be like damn Dorian is so smart and he deserves millions of followers and deserves to be verified on Twitter. So Cloak and Dagger made their first appearance back in Peter Parker the Spectacular Spider-Man number 64 back in March of 1982 and when they were first introduced they had a real connection with Spider-Man because they were also known as like street level heroes they weren't known to like join the Fantastic Four or team up with the Avengers or anything like that they they stuck to their city their town they're just handling their business they're like hey if, if it's over there in Texas I don't need to worry about it I'm over here where I need to be and that's all I got to do and after their introduction in the spider-man comics fans really took a liking to them so Marvel decided to give them a four issue limited series of their own adventures it became really successful so they made it an ongoing bi-monthly series that started in 1985 so that's how they were created that's how they were brought into the scene now let's dive into their who the, they are as a people who are they are as a character like who are their souls let's get inside and dive into their minds and let's see what they're about dude I don't know what I'm talking about it's 420 so Tyrone Johnson who goes by Ty aka Cloak was a 17 year old boy from Massachusetts 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 from Massachusetts and he had a debilitating stuttering issue and one day his speech impediment uh, prevented him from stopping his friend from being killed by a cop who mistakenly thought that his friend was a robber so he couldn't he couldn't like speak up or anything and his friend ended up dying so he decided to run away to New York and then Tandy Bowen aka Dagger was a 16 year old girl from a privileged upbringing she was born in Shakers Heights Ohio who ran away because her multi-millionaire supermodel mother was too busy for her to give her any love or any attention so she decided to run away because she wasn't getting the love that she that like a child needs to be nurtured but low he, I'm not saying if I was in that same situation I wouldn't run away but if I'm if I have money if I'm chilling I mean money can't buy happiness but Tandy I would have been if I was you I would have just been chilling just I would have had a movie theater built in my room or built in built in the house and um, a bowling complex and see if she would have thought about doing that type of stuff then she probably wouldn't have wanted to run away because you can't go wrong with having a movie theater. Everybody loves going to the movies and then you just have the movie shipped to you, boy. So originally one day Tyrone saw Tandy and was thinking about stealing her purse from her so he can get some money. And what actually happened was a thief stole it from Tandy before Tyrone could get to it. And Tyrone had a instinct of trying to be a good guy. He was like, I'm not going to let that dude steal a purse from another woman. So he ended up uh, helping Tandy and got the purse back from her. And after that, they became close friends because they were runaways. So they could, they both had that in common and they were they were both looking for somebody else to to help them out in this world that they living in so they became close friends uh, and built a fast relationship after that and one day a strange man offered Tandy shelter and protection and naive Tandy the, the typical uh, white girls Becky like I mean I'm, her name's not Becky but we'll use Becky as an example she she was like oh yeah of course like for sure, like, yeah, I'll definitely um, come live with you even though I don't know who you are or have any background or anything like that. Like, you know, Valley Girl. But Tyrone being, uh, having some common sense was like, I don't know about this, man. Like, what? I, I don't trust this. I, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a go, but I don't know. I'm side-eyeing y'all. But he decides to go with her to just to keep her safe. What ended up happening was the two teens were forcibly delivered to this criminal chemist named Simon Marshall, who was developing a new synthetic drug that he was testing on runaway teens, but it had fatal results. Like, nobody, every, nobody was surviving from it. But what ended up happening was after they tested it on Tyrone and Tandy, they were able 
able to escape and the synthetic drugs actually worked in them and gave them superpowers. Tyrone found himself engulfed in darkness and seized by a strange hunger which eased in the presence of Tandy's brilliant light. Trying to hide his newly shadowy appearance in a makeshift cloak, Tyrone began absorbing Marshall's thugs into his darkness while Tandy struck them with daggers of light. And the two teams dubbed themselves Cloak and Dagger and declared a war on drug and crime and combating drug dealers and helping runaway children. That's pretty much a, a quick rundown of their origin, but what I really wanted to dive into in this video is their powers because that's what really makes them special and their powers kind of are codependent on each other. So I want to talk about the powers and how we're, we can expect to see them in the MCU hopefully. So Cloak's powers come from him having the ability to manipulate the Dark Force. The Dark Force is a pretty unique energy that's in the Marvel multiverse. Like in Doctor Strange when uh, One Punch Man was like, tap into your mind. Who are you in this world of vastly Marvel or this is one of those dimensions that she was talking about. The Dark Force Dimension has the ability to assume the properties of both matter and energy depending on the needs of the user. And in fact, the Dark Force has actually already been introduced into the MCU on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So this man named Daniel was locked up by Hydra and he had the ability to tap into the Dark Force. The Dark Force energy is perceived by humans as dark matter either in the form of gas, liquid, or a solid form. It's cold and draining and prolonged effects to it can turn you evil and even prolonger effects, is that a word, prolonger? Even longer effects to it can kill you so you don't want to be in the dark force if you can't control the dark force you don't want the dark force unless unless you're Darth Vader or Kylo Ren Kylo Ren is a scrub Kylo Ren take all give me a lightsaber square up I will beat your ass Kylo that's all I just want everybody to know that he is a scrub um he needs to get out of his feelings sorry your dad didn't like you could be in bitch made. The dark force can also be used to create localized fields of impenetrable darkness, create mobile solid tendrils of darkness, hide in shadows. Cloak can also pull people into the dark force dimension by opening a portal within his cloak. He's like, oops, surprise, motherfucker, cloak. And with cloak, he kind of has a constant hunger. When Thea was killed and they put her in the Lazarus pit, it's kind of like that. Like when she came back, she had a constant hunger. That's and she needed it always to be satisfied. That's what it's kind of like. And Dagger has the ability to create psionic light daggers. Her daggers generate a form of living light, which is actually life force. Her main power, besides the dagger, is light itself. She has living light detoxification, is what it's called. Her light energy can also be used to help purge a person of removing any toxins from their body, any drugs, any other substances that shouldn't be in there. She'd be the goat at any college. Like I'd hit her up if I was drunk or something or if I had a hung hangover. I'd just be like, yo, yo, Tandy, can you can you hit me up real quick? Can you come over real quick? She could sell that low key, like the ultimate hangover cure. She just has to be like, hey, you're cured. Damn, I wish superpowers were real. And overuse of her powers can be fatal, but she's able to generate and store this life force energy automatically. So, so if she ever uses too much, she'll get something like, she'll recharge. So she has an abundance of life force, which is something everybody in the world needs right now. She can generate six inch light daggers, which she can throw from her fingertips. And, and her daggers may automatically form under certain conditions, such as another person being in danger. Her daggers when used can also track other human beings, but it's most effective to track Cloak whenever she needs to find Cloak or she needs to give Cloak some more, some more of that light light. And when she's traveling through Cloak's dimension, she's able to protect herself and protect others with her who are teleporting through the, the dark force dimension. Those are pretty much their powers. Powers. Um, I, I hope I didn't make it too complicated for you guys. We've seen the Dark Force already introduced in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So it definitely has to be the same type of um, energy that they're going to use. So I hope there's a possibility we get some interaction or a crossover between the two shows. They say it's connected. I haven't seen some connections yet besides the Netflix series, but we'll see what happens. I, I'm, I'm excited for this show. I think this has the potential to be a really great show. I'm excited for this first season and we'll hopefully we'll get some interaction in, involved into the other MCU. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I will see you guys, who knows, next time for a video. But honestly, I'm gonna try to be more consistent with posting. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Peace up, A-Town Down.